All right, so let's open up a song. And let's talk about doing some general mixing, some uh, automation, things like that. What I've got right here is some uh, drums, bass guitar, some guitars, a lead part. Um, and we'll actually kind of lead into where that lead part is. We'll play that back. Let's move a little forward here to where the solo is. Now you'll notice that the solo is a little bit loud right there, um, and it's very dynamic in the way that it was recorded. It was also recorded with effects on it. So what I'm going to want to do is change the automation. All I have to do is click the automation track, and it shows me automatically right off the bat my volume automation. All I want to do is click on here and then I can see pan as well. But because I want to change the volume, I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I'm going to bring it down just quite a little bit. Just by clicking that there. So we can get the gist of the beginning of the solo and then from there on out. Let's back up a bit. So now it's apparent, but it's not quite as in your face and it doesn't get as loud. Before, I think the automation was kind of off, so that works out a lot better. Okay, so now I have the mix basically the way that I want it. I've done my automation, I've done my editing, um, and I've got my levels in the mixer the way I want. So what I can do is I can bounce this to an audio file. Just by going to song, I can mix down to an audio file. I can also export stems, which is kind of a powerful tool. By doing this, I can export these stems or selected stems, um, and then I could you, put them into another software or I could uh, sum them into another mixer. Um, now, let's go back here, song, mix down to audio file, and you'll notice it shows you the location where you're going to bounce it on your computer, uh, what you're going to name the file, uh, you know, the format in which you can uh, bounce it, wave, AIFF all that great stuff, and then your resolution and sample rate, so uh, the bit depth and the samples uh, that you can export the uh, stereo file to. And then your export range, basically between the loops or between markers for a bounce, and then your output options. Instead of actually uh, exporting uh, this session, what I'm going to do is actually add this to a mastering project that I already have open. Because Studio One is integrated in its record mixing and mastering uh, project, I don't actually have to bounce it as a stereo file and then import it into a mastering software. All I'll have to do is add it to a project. So select song and then add to project. I already have a mastering project open, so I'll select that. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to update the mastering file because I've changed something in the uh, song. Now what this means is is I've added a song to my mastering project. So songs are multi-track mixes and projects are stereo masters. They're the stereo version of that mix. Um, the cool thing about Studio One is because it's integrated, if I change something in the mix, it, it knows in the mastering project. So if I need to do a vocal up or a vocal down, instead of having to change it in my mix and reprint it and import it into another mastering software, I just change it and then update it, and then I'm done. So I, in the event that I need to change something, I just change it real quick and then save it, and I'm, that's all. So I'm not going to update right now, but I am gonna bounce around through here and show you how this kind of works. Um, right now I'm selected on here, the uh, S1DE2 file. Um, and you can see I can select back and forth and then they alternate in their track position. This is where I'd apply my fades, and this is where I'd apply um, any uh, volume ups or volume downs on the individual files. I can also apply effects specifically to the files inside of the project and then across the entire mix bus output. So if I select a track, I can go to my inserts and add a Pro EQ or add a multiband dynamics individually to those tracks. I can also do this on the master track. I actually have a Pro EQ already on that master track. 
So that's pretty powerful stuff. Selecting the track and then grabbing this little deal here allows me to change the uh, output, the actual. It's kind of like um, processing the audio just by clicking and dragging a button. So I, I, first of all, don't have to wait for it to process, which is a very valuable tool. So I can get everything kind of to the same level and then start applying my EQ, my multi bin compression, and then limiting uh, the master output. We'll select here and we'll play something back. Now you'll notice that in this screen, I have a spectral analyzer, I have a stereo left and right output, and a phase meter. So right now I'm looking at the Peak RMS uh, stereo output meter. There's also the Bobcats metering system, the K20, 14, and K12, different metering systems. Um, the spectral analyzer kind of lets me know, just like in the Pro EQ, what kind of uh, damage that I'm doing or what kind of good I'm doing. So if I'm affecting uh, a lot of high-end frequencies, it's going to show a lot of action going on that analyzer. Um, once I've got everything the way that I want it, the last thing I'd do before I actually printed a master would be to code the CD with metadata. Uh, you can put in an image for the band, you can put in um, you know, the songwriter, any kind of comments you want individually on each uh, track, and then you can burn your disc. So I've got my tracks and I've got my mix the way that I want it. So let's talk about actually burning a disc. You absolutely can burn a disc right from this software, or you can save a disc image, or you can digitally release. With Studio One Pro 1.5, I can click digital release, MP3 file, and then I can uh, upload this right to SoundCloud. SoundCloud is a third party, um, kind of like a community where I can, uh, integrate it with Studio One and all I've got to do just by integrating this into my Studio One, basically setting up my account and then locking the accounts together, I can hit OK and instead of burning a CD, it automatically uploads through the internet to SoundCloud. Um, what's cool about SoundCloud is people can uh, comment, it's a community, people can comment at specific uh, times in your song and tell you you're doing a great job or they like this solo. So that's super awesome, and obviously we're not burning CDs and wasting uh, CDs. So we can update digitally just by doing that. Again, I'm Justin Spence with PreSonus Audio, and if you have any questions about Studio One or any PreSonus products, check us out on the web at PreSonus.com.